Hi, my name's Jason O'Brien. I'm here at ICMP talking about the Orion Studio Synergy Core Interface. I was an artist for 15 years in a band called Dub Pistols. We were signed to Geffen in America. I remixed a lot of artists, so people like Korn, Limp Bizkit, Moby, Ian Brown, uh, Lily Allen, all these kind of bands. Did a lot of work for film, so I have music in uh, Zoolander and a few other Ben Stiller movies. In about 2010, I became interested in education and I was working in Asia for SSR Jakarta. I then moved to London and now I now work for SSR London, uh, Abbey Road Institute and ICMP here in Kilburn. My first impressions of the interface, um, obviously the build quality is really nice, that was impressive. And on, also on the back there's like loads and loads of inputs and outputs. Here we've got um, two monitor outputs which I thought was really cool. And then we've got all these mic inputs and line inputs, we've actually got 12 in total. Got a couple of inserts and then at the front uh, we can take high Z signals in here via the jacks. And also this was really cool I thought, we've got um, two reamping outputs which I've you know was quite unusual and also two headphone outputs so yeah so that was really it's really interesting to see all that stuff so Antelope have always sort of been renowned for their their sound quality and also the quality of their clocks which is kind of like an industry uh, leader in that field I'm here at ICMP in London and I'm looking to work on a mix that I started last year and recreate it but just using the Antelope and the plugins that come with the Antelope the original mix was done at Abbey Road using a Neve and lots of hardware. First thing about the Orion is the sort of flexibility of the software. So I've got, uh, for this particular session, I'm going to be using effects that are housed within the software here. And I've also got this very versatile routing page on the, on the control panel. Basically, it's allowing me to send sound from Pro Tools into this via hardware insert. So hardware I.O. is going through the Orion, passing through a plug-in and then coming back via the same I.O. back into Pro Tools, just like analog gear would be connected, uh, which is really cool. And um, all the effects that I'm using can be shown and added to in this screen and also saved with the session, which is really useful. This is a track that I was working on with the Dub Pistols. Um, it's, not, it's not out at the moment. And it's sort of in the mixing stage. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity to try, try mixing it through the Antelope. Okay, so this is the track. Um, so let's Let's have a listen to how it sounds and bearing in mind this is only using the plugins that came with this box, nothing, nothing external. No fellow rude boys, stand fast and let us unite and deal with 100 or 1000 years. So the first thing I normally do when I'm mixing is I'll sort of treat the lead vocal. In this case, um, it's a female vocal, a girl called Rhoda Dakar that used to be in a, a, a two-tone band called the Body Snatchers, a great, great British uh, ska band. And I, um, I was using just the internal plugin. So what, what I went for on this one, and it's, it's quite intuitive to use this software. I mean, at first it was like a new thing for me, but I found it quite easy to use. Um, and I've gone for sort of an analog style EQ here just basically brightened it up a little bit uh, to make it cut through in the mix. And I've tried to even the signal out using this compressor. It's, it's kind of, it's a nice subtle kind of uh, approach, I think, using these. So if I just give you a before and after, this is the signal before I'd use these internal effects. So this is uh, without, without the plugins. Um, if I bring in the EQ, kind of a, bit, a little bit brighter, a little bit more clarity. No matter what the problem you can hear that, it's, yeah, it's a little bit brighter, it's nice. And then Unity a little bit of control on the, on the sort of dynamics of the vocal using sort of subtle it's compression, quite gentle compression on, on the vocal. We'll I, was, I was really happy with the results using this. Do. So for the drums, um, I'd rooted all the drums to a bus and uh, I was processing them all as a group using uh, these built-in effects. So there's an EQ here and also a, a, a compressor. So let's have a listen to before and after with these ones. So firstly, I'll play it before. And I'll, I'll play it after. So the, the, the level's gone up slightly, but let's, let's try and balance that. So quite dull, sort of, you know, not particularly interesting. More clarity, more, more high end, and also a little bit more excitement using this, this, this compressor here uh, with a four to one ratio. So that sounds great. Let's, let's put that back into the, into the mix and see how that sounds. Yeah. 
So one of the plugins that I, I was kind of really liked on this was the, uh, the tape emulation plugin, which I've used on the master, the master bus. I wasn't expecting it to quite do as much as it does. So if we, if we listen to that, I'm just going to play again, I'll play before and after. So, so, so this is without, and if I bring that in, yeah, how, how kind of enhanced it sounds. It's really, really, really nice. And I wasn't actually doing an awful lot here, but that, I think that's a really, a really nice usable plugin. Let me, let me bypass one more time. So my original intention was to do a lot of the heavy loading of this mix in terms of processing, compression, EQ, using the device to free up maybe my CPU or my computer for other things. Um, I was quite impressed really with the amount of plugins that I was able to run as hardware inserts. So I've got, you know, as we saw before, I've got vocal plugins, I've got a bass, bass plug in there, I've got drum, drum bus processing, guitar processing, uh, I think a bit of lift, EQ lift on the backing vocals. Horns, um, Hammond organ here, and, and a lot of different things going on, all the way up to you know the final thing, which was the you know the tape emulation at the end. I didn't notice any issues with running that many plugins, which was I thought was surprising. You know, it was just it was just quite um, quite impressive really to to have all these hardware inserts running with no kind of weirdness going on with the interface. So in summary. I enjoyed using the interface. It was um, it was definitely uh, nice to be able to run so many plugins from it um, to free up the CPU on my little laptop there. Um, I like the amount of I/O that it has. That was that was immediately something that was appealing to me, and also the fact that the um, the plugins are sort of dual FPGA and DSP. The DSP side of that could run third parties, which is kind of nice to offload even more, maybe onto onto this device. Yeah, generally a nice a nice interface and. You know, it sounded, it sounded really good, slightly different to the, the original mix, but I was happy with the end result.